on my first question. How's the, how's the voice? How long did it take you to get it back? Um, probably 48 hours. It was uh, the day after the game, obviously, still wasn't there, but I think the boys were happy they couldn't listen to me and hear me, so... <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, sorry about that. It was uh, just something that happened. I didn't uh, obviously expect it to happen. Probably, um, as I said, uh, stupidly, I was trying to out-shout uh, 80,000 people and, you know, get the message across. It. Unfortunately, it was the, the message I was trying to get across, it was on the far side of the pitch. <clears throat> and... Um, but uh, that's the way it is. I appreciate it, Zach. Makes it easier to train with the game. Now you've had time to reflect on the end of the match and what, what sort of is your, your thoughts or what are you sort of taking from it? Yeah, look, no doubt uh, we were... Um, I thought the boys did exceptionally well. The effort rate and the work rate was fantastic. The mentality of, uh, you know, that we've been driving now for a long time is we, you know, whoever we play against, we're, we're in their faces and and try and take away their strengths. And when you play against those type of top nations, uh, it's a technical aspect that's probably better than us. <clears throat> and we, you know, we work so hard to take that away from them. But um, but at the end of the day, it's, uh, I wasn't happy with the result. It, um, my expectations with the boys is um, obviously to win games. We had the chances to, uh, to win that game. And so like any other game, if you if you don't win it, uh, but you've had the chances, then you're disappointed, and that's how I felt. You know what? The draw against Mexico, Argentina at the World Cup, this one here. Is this a team that you feel has the potential to get to a position where we can knock off these sort of nations? Well, that's the aim. Um, and again, it's uh, that's my belief in, in, in the boys. And <clears throat> you know, I think the boys showed the other night that maybe we get underestimated by. Um, certain parts of media and even you know the world you know we've got some uh, good young kids coming through that uh, are starting their careers and you know these kids could end up in the top uh, Premier League because uh, you know at the end of the day a lot of the players at uh, the golden generation didn't get into the Premier League till they were 25 26 and that's where these kids are at today and um, you know I think we showed that uh, as I said we can compete and when I say compete it's it's uh, again. It's my belief in what the boys can bring, and uh, we work extremely hard as a unit, and we are a team as one, and we play for the nation, and you know we make sure that um, <clears throat> we give everything we've got, and uh, and leave everything on the field. And that's all I demand. In terms of young talent, you've got a few in the squad that are still uncapped. Are you sort of looking at maybe getting, giving another couple of the boosters in this game? Yeah, look, you'll see some changes uh, for this game, not wholesale changes. Um, again, it's my last chance to uh, have a look at uh, some some of the players that I've brought in over time. Um, you know, the, uh, the crazy thing, and it's not crazy, but the thing is now it's I've get, I'm getting headaches now in selecting a team where probably for three or four years I didn't have that because we had... Uh, <clears throat> You know, when I again when I took over after Russia, it was an old squad, and I had to regenerate the squad at that time. But plus, win matches and qualify for World Cups. You know, this is I think this is probably only my tenth friendly out of forty-two games, nearly, and um, you know that I've been able to test players and, and give them opportunities. And uh, tomorrow night is the last one, and then and it's about the performance tomorrow night and winning the game and. Some, a certain amount of players to show me what they've got moving ahead for the World Cup qualifiers that start in November and uh, and also the Asian Cup in January. So, um, you know, it's, uh, as I said, the, the depth and regenerating the squad and we're getting more and more depth and that was the most important thing for me over the last six months when I re-signed. You mentioned the squad at the moment, you talk about Asian Cup <coughs> qualification coming up. But do you feel at the moment you have a clear idea of what your team will look like Exactly. You know, there's no guarantees to play for your nation. If it was a club side and I had 23 registered players for the full year, well then, okay. But when you when you're coaching a nation, it's uh, the players have to be performing at club level and getting match minutes and and, and playing well. Now. Sometimes over the last four years that hasn't been the case <clears throat> because of obviously we went through COVID and, 
and you know it's, I had to pick some players and they weren't playing but now we're getting that depth and uh, more depth and it's about you know picking the best 23 players in form at the time of when the window comes it's you know there's as I said there's no one signed a contract to play for the national team they have to earn it there's always a rivalry between us and New Zealand every sport and uh, <clears throat> there's only one attitude that I expect one mindset and that's to go out there and win this game and um, put in a great performance again that uh, the nation will be proud of and you know so nothing changes tomorrow night on my side we'll be uh, playing our best football we'll be in their faces for 90 minutes and, and chasing them and, and putting pressure on them and, and playing our style it's the most important thing um, obviously for me you've got a full cohort to choose from like is anyone yep. everyone's, everyone's pulled up great all 26 players and um, they've all pulled up pulled up really well after the game and as I said it was a uh, I haven't really reflected that much on it yet. Probably when I get home and settle down a bit, and then I might look back at Wembley in a different way and the performance in a different way. But my my full focus and mindset is is on the game tomorrow. Where are you finding the biggest headaches? Where the selection selection areas? You keep talking about nearly everywhere. And look again, there's certain players that I had to leave out that uh, I probably didn't have those issues a couple of years ago. And uh, certain players that I had to leave, leave out, I had to call up, and that was really hard conversations because I believe in telling them face to, or not face to face, but telling them individually why they haven't been selected. And yet, <clears throat> again, the A League hasn't started yet. And so this weekend, when the A League starts, all those players will come back into contention. Yeah, I'm Graham. Uh, you say it's a friendly, but given that it's a soccer ashes, how, how friendly is it going to be? Like same as uh, <clears throat> you know, as uh, against us against England. I, in my view, there's no such thing as friendlies. They're fixtures, and you know they're fixtures for us as a team to to get better and improve and on what we're doing and uh, and performing. And whenever you put that badge on your heart and you wear that uh, soccer's jersey, uh, you're playing for the nation. It's not just a, a friendly and going out there and you know <clears throat> taking taking liberties, it's it's about going there and putting in a great performance. It's a really interesting story too, the, the Lost Ashes, you know, found in the garage I think mm. a year ago and the story behind it, you know, going to Gallipoli with a soldier, I mean, how inspiring is the whole story of the Super Ashes? No, hugely. And uh, I showed that video uh, today to the players in small groups to get that reaction and uh, <clears throat> for them to understand because we've got Obviously, a number of players who, you know, uh, have been overseas for a long, long time, didn't really know about it. And obviously, when the Ashes, uh, when it disappeared in 1950, the Ashes Trophy, and, and it's only just come back. It's the first time in 70 years it's been played for. So it's, it's a, a big meaning to this. And this is quite <clears> an inspiring <throat> place too. Brentford are, you know, one of the smallest clubs in the Premier League, but punched well above their weight. It's their third year in the Premier League. What do you like about Brentford? Oh, look, um, I, I came here to the old stadium, you know, a number of years ago um, when Pim Bake was in charge <coughs> to do some scouting, but uh, uh, it's fantastic. It's uh, But it's just it's just England overall, you know, being here and there's got so many stadiums around London and it's just such a, a lovable football culture here in England that, um, that really excites you all the time. Are you expecting to <coughs> Yeah, look, I I got no idea about that. It's um, hopefully there's a good crowd, uh, but for me, my focus is just on our performance. Just finally, what did the Gareth say to you personally after that? Well, he just said how well we played, and thank you for that uh, that game. And <clears throat> I believe that. Um, the English FA have data that uh, probably <clears throat> the, the sports science data that was uh, the second best in the history since a new stadium 
of the way we played in terms of the pressing and the the work rate of the players. And um, you know, Gareth was very thankful for that, um, the way that we played. And the, the, he said we we don't normally play against teams that press like that. You know, they normally sit back here at Wembley, and the way you played it, it's really got us ready for Italy tonight. And how have you seen them going against Italy? You know, qualification perhaps again? No, they'll, they'll be fine tonight. They'll win. I expect England to win 2-0. Uh, Glenn, just for you, <coughs> Yeah, just to say, um, I wondered what you expected to get from uh, New Zealand with Chris Wood, the obvious fact you put there if he plays. Yeah, look, um, I watch them. Obviously, they played against Congo on Friday, um, Friday night. And uh, obviously I watched him and, you know, he's completely changed his style and system that uh, they had under Danny Hay with a, you know, playing a, a 4-3-3. Um, <clears throat> obviously Chris Wood's a, an EPL player that uh, has got those qualities. But uh, again, you know, we, we, we know what their shape and everything is, is, is like and we'll uh, make sure we're ready for them. Yeah, it's it's pretty much the way my style is and the way I like to play. It's you know if we press and put the opposition under under pressure, you know, for ninety minutes, then and especially you know keeping the ball away from their better players, then uh, you always then got a better chance of winning. And you know, as I said, I've never never coached a team to go out and try not to lose. I always coach a team to go out and win. Okay, thanks for your time. Sorry about that. Thank you.